Hey guys, welcome back to Two Friends in the Bible. It is coffee and study time with Brenda. Mm -hmm. We missed her last <laughs> week, and we've been <laughs> and we've been picking our brain before since before we even got on here. We had to get picked. <laughs> we had to pick a brain, get caught up. <laughs> we I'm missed her. Brain left. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing left. You gotta have a little left for today. <laughs> Oh, but no, we um we are glad to have you back. We've really missed having you here. And um I don't have coffee today though, but I have my um tea. So oh, I got that. I got, got diet Pepsi. Oh, you got diet Pepsi? Okay, I got tea. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway, but we are ready to get going. And Flora, will you just open some in prayer and get started with our first question? I sure will. Thank you. We just want to come to you right now and just start off by saying we love you and we thank you for the opportunity to get together as friends and fellowship and, and talk hard. And Lord, we also pray that you'd be with us as we do this video, that we don't have any technical issues. Um, you know, let your Holy Spirit lead us, fill us. Anyone watching this video after we put it up, Lord, we pray that you know, just fill them with the Holy Spirit. We pray that we plant a seed and it grows and helps them to either grow closer to you or come to know you better. And Lord, we just, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you for dying on the cross for us. And we thank you for rising again as our King of Kings. And Lord, we just we love you so much and, and we could never say thank you enough. We just ask this in your most precious and most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, Miss Brenda, let's get started with our first question. I'm going to spell this. It's Nika, N-I-K-A-L-Y-9. And then she has I-F behind her name. I think it's a, a woman. She's asking, is regarding Orthodox practices. She is an Orthodox Christian from Macedonia. Um, and which... She done or written in the the Didache. Didache was that correct, Brenda? I think it's the Didache, but I'm I'm not really sure. Didache. I've never, sorry. I've never sorry. heard it pronounced before. So okay, so D D I D A C H E. If anybody, I want. What is your opinion regarding this? Because all church life rituals here are based on it, such as baptism. Your characteristic confession, fasting, and holy day feast. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I'm not actually familiar with that that particular brand brand of, of uh, orthodoxy. I, I've I've been um, I've been to Russia, and I've been to Russian Orthodox churches, and I've been to uh, Greek Orthodox church um, for for service. And so, you know, it's all very interesting. And of course I've, I've, I've been to Catholic church, churches, you know, there's, there's some similarity in that they're mm -hmm. all very, very high church. Um, what we call high church as opposed to like, um, you know, Baptist or fundamentalist Protestant. Okay. Most mm -hmm. Protestant churches are considered low Lutheran church unless you're Lutheran, Lutheran, Lutheran Episcopal or something like that. <laughs> so, um, so here's the thing, uh, you know, a lot of, I, I really don't care what denomination you're in, whether you're Orthodox or whether you're Catholic or whether you're Protestant, doesn't matter what denomination kind, what branch mm -hmm. of Christianity you're involved with. Chances are that it it comes with a great deal of tradition mm -hmm. that's that's sort of the thing okay and that most most um, church services and so on are based on tradition whatever tradition that may be. like you're going to go with catholic tradition which you know goes back you know hundreds of years uh even protestantism came out of catholicism it was a reaction to it was protesting catholicism and the reformation was about reforming catholicism so mm -hmm. you know even protestantism is can find finds its roots actually in catholicism so 
And for the most part, all of this is really built on tradition. And mm -hmm. there's, um, you know, some Bible stuff in there. Um, I'm familiar with the Didache. I have never read it. I don't know anything about that in particular. Uh, I have a feeling, though, that it's a sort of a prescription for how to do things in church. That's sort of um, my thinking about what that probably is. And here's, you know, I, I never want to offend anybody because I know a lot of people are really blessed in, in their church mm -hmm. tradition. I, I know that for a fact. That a lot of people, yeah. it brings them a lot of comfort to go and sit in a beautiful church, to hear the liturgy, you know, to smell the incense, to, you know, have the stained glass windows and, you know, all of that. It, there's a lot of comfort and peace that comes from that. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. Is that the church of that Jesus is building, he's building it under um under the influencer, the guidance and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit has a very hard time being bound by tradition. And in fact, Jesus talked about this. It was a problem even in the first century with the, with the Jews. And they had mm -hmm. their tradition. They had the word of God. Okay. And then they had their tradition that they added to the word of God to try to make it you know, so that they could be doing a better job of worshiping God. And what Jesus, when he compared the traditional worship that the Jews had in the first century with uh, wineskins, okay, and that what he was doing was bringing in something that would not fit into the old tradition. Mm -hmm. Don't put new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, you burst the skin, but you put new wine into new wine skins. So what basically he's talking about is that, you know, the Holy Spirit is living and he's going to do things that may he may want to do things that go outside of what our tradition, what our safe space is, <laughs> and traditionally mm -hmm. speaking. And if we get stuck into this traditional view of of worship and church the holy spirit can only work so much inside of that and so we're we become limited in you know in our walk with the lord so to me that is the 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 worst aspect of this is that the holy spirit wants to move in big ways but he can't because the wine skin is too it's it's mm -hmm. too small and it cannot hold the the movement of the holy spirit it it will ruin it and yeah. so the the parable about that you know when is in luke 5 verses 36 through 39 and to me the um the interesting thing that jesus said was in the last part of this parable and he says that no one after drinking old wine wants new for he says the old is better and you know, this is kind of how it goes. We we look at the old wine of our traditions and we go, well, this is all pretty good. Why would I want anything different? Mm -hmm. And that's the danger. Yeah, you're, you're, it's almost like you're putting um, Holy Spirit under a rock. You know, you're not letting him do what he needs to, to do. Yeah, it's very you know? limiting for him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think in a lot of ways, it's why as, as Christ, Christians are, remain continual babies all the time, that we never really get to maturity is because we're kept in a safe space all the time. It's like we're in the crib all the time. We never mm -hmm. get to get out and, you know, you know, wow. tumble down the stairs or, you know, burn our, you know, we never get a chance to do any of those big things because it's all very safe. It's very controlled. <laughs> very authoritative mm -hmm. and, um so it doesn't it doesn't promote spiritual growth in a balanced way okay and that makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. where i was raised in church i mean looking back on it i can see for myself that i wasn't being i mean i've learned so much since i'm kind of out of that and I'm not saying I'm like you. I don't want to offend anyone. But, 
you just got to be careful with the churches. They're not teaching everything. It's not really being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can't grow you where you need to be if yeah. if he's limited, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I get that. Yeah. And that, and that can be in any denomination because um, mm -hmm. we were raised Southern mm -hmm. Baptist. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, there was limitations as to yeah. how far they went. Like, you yeah. know, they don't, you know, they don't speak in tongues and mm -hmm. things like that. And they take um, the Lord's Supper communion every three months, once a quarter versus, oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas when I went like to the denominational, we did it every week. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that is, it, and it's a big to do when they do have the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. which yeah. is what they call it. Um it's the Lord's Supper communion, but um, that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. so you just don't want to be too you don't want to be too tied tied down. Basically, you want well, yeah. Um, tradition is it is a very comforting thing, and I think that's its main appeal. Is that you know, like a like a loving parent, you know, this tradition is a warm, fuzzy thing that, you know, we, we resonate with that there has a little place inside of us, you know, if we're, if we're, you know, if, if we have positive feelings associated with it, not everybody does, of course, but, you know, if, if it's been generally positive for you, then yes, you're, you're going to have, you know, warm fuzzies when you think mm -hmm. about it, but yeah, it's not really you know, what do we think about it? It's what is, what does God think about it? What is Jesus perspective? Is this what Jesus came to set up? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Jesus ministry, is this what he came to do? Mm -hmm. And I'd have to say, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's a kind of a poor substitute and most of what goes on in, in modern, even, and it, it, Christendom in general is not what Jesus had intended. So. No, and I mean he left us the um Holy Spirit, you know, and 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 he didn't say, you know, Holy Spirit unless you you know, unless he's telling you too much and then just kind of ignore him. You know, I mean, that, you know, basically, I mean, that's not what he said, you know. He left it with us for a helper to teach us. Yeah. Yes. To bring remembrance to us, yeah. you know, a lot of things. And and really to grow us up. That's part mm -hmm. of the role of the Holy Spirit to grow us up, bring us into maturity in Christ, and that we're not just kept infants all of our Christian life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be yep. babies. You want to be able to graduate to the meat. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that was, thank you for answering yeah. that. It was a great yeah, question. That was a very good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So well, you ready for the next one? Sure. Okay. Um, Michelle asked, um, in God's kingdom at the wedding feast, who exactly are the people that are going to be invited? Okay. <laughs> who are the guests at the wedding wedding supper? Okay. Now I'm, I'm just going to have to clarify when the wedding supper takes place because so many people teach that. And this is what I believe because I'd been taught this, but it never really made sense to me and I never really could see it the way it was taught in revelation. I, I couldn't see it, but it was like, I, who was I, what do I know? You know, <laughs> right. Right. I know, I know. I remember how we were. <laughs> but um, most um, people who teach uh, pre, pre tribulation rapture sort of thing, or even I think post-trip people may teach it too, pre wrath is that um, when Jesus comes back or we go to heaven, whichever, that is when, the marriage supper takes place and that's, you know, the groom comes to get the bride and so on and so forth. But that isn't the teaching of revelation. The book of revelation does not show the wedding supper taking place until revelation 22 revelation mm -hmm. 19. The angel says to John blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb, but it's not until revelation 22 that we see the spirit and the bride say mm -hmm. come and are actually inviting people to the wedding supper okay so who is the bride well the bride is everyone who has received jesus christ as their savior and have been has been born again of the spirit of god and has walked with jesus 
um, you know, from, from, you know, the oldest Old Testament saint all the way up to the last person who gets saved before Christ returns. Um, all of these people, um, with the exception of apostates, okay, which we're not going to talk about today, um, are going to be uh, part of the bride. Mm -hmm. The bride is going to be glorified. Okay. We're made immortal and glorified. And then we're given these additional beautiful white robes, which are the righteous deeds of the saints, which we will be doing during the millennium. And so that, and, and then we have the new Jerusalem comes down and that's the home of God, the father, who's going to be dwelling with people with and people. Jesus and, and us. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, um, then once you have the bride and you have uh, the spirit, now we're inviting other people, but they're not, they're not believers. They haven't been glorified. They're not part of the bride, but they are people who've lived out history who were resurrected at the great white throne judgment, whose names were written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they are going to be made immortal, not glorified, but immortal sinless and they are going to live on the new earth that's their home and they are going to be invited to come to the new jerusalem for the wedding supper and so i know go ahead oh no i was gonna say and these people are like old testament people like um Ab abraham and isaac and jacob and david and moses and all them that are the guests mm -hmm. Nope, they're actually part of the bride. Oh, yes, because, that's right. Because you know, they're in Hebrews, Hebrews eleven and twelve tells us that these are the are um uh what is it called the the church of the firstborn it says the church of the firstborn that they're waiting for the city that's to come. So all the Old Testament saints that we read in Hebrews 11, including additional ones that aren't mentioned, if they had faith in the Old Testament, they are part of the church. They're part of the bride. And I know a lot of people don't teach that, but that is what the scriptures teach. Mm -hmm. okay, that's so exactly it's basically there. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, so they're basically the ones that, that remain faithful to God during the Old Testament, correct? They believe in the Old, yes. Old Testament. Okay. Any any um, person who was faithful to God prior to Christ's coming, mm -hmm. you know, of, of anybody who knew the real God and believed the real God is a part of the church. They're so you know, Abel actually is you know part of the church, and Seth and Abraham and Noah and all these people, they're all part of the church. So they are actually going to receive their resurrection bodies. When we get our our glorified, you know, our, our immortal bodies. Okay, so they're all part of this group. The people who are going to be living on the new earth are people who never <clears throat> heard about God, never heard about Jesus, didn't know anything about Israel, lived, you know, maybe, you know, who, who knows where they lived, but uh, they were good people. Okay, and here's here's the part that we have a heart we get confused on okay this is the part where everybody gets confused the bible tells us that in adam all die okay all people die because we are descended from adam adam mm -hmm. is what's called the federal head he was the one who did it for everybody <laughs> okay he Thanks, sinned Adam. for everybody <laughs> so there's original sin that comes from him and then we all are sinners because we sin okay so that's but that's different if we're talking about original sin in adam all sin all die okay except for those of us who are you know hopefully be raptured but as in adam all die so also in christ shall some be made alive a few be made alive Bible says all, all die, all are made alive. Okay. Yep. All is all. Okay. So all Christians are going to eventually be resurrected be, and not Christians, all people, all of humanity that can trace their ancestry, you know, God can trace their ancestry back to Adam is part of this, this group of mankind that Jesus died to save all, 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 all. 
Okay. Now you can exempt yourself by taking the mark of the beast. You can exempt yourself in a lot of ways, but basically what Christ did was he, he paid the price of redemption that freed us from the bondage to death and brought everybody, everybody's going to be resurrected. Okay. So he paid the debt for all of humanity. So we're all over here now, and out of all of humanity, there are people who are being called out of this group to be part of another group. That's the church. And that's what it means. The ecclesia are the called out. Gotcha. We're called out. We're called out of this bigger group. Now, everybody who is in this group um, is going to be judged. Okay, we've already passed from judgment. Okay, we're not ever going to enter into judgment. But this group that's going to be resurrected, um, the descendants of Adam who aren't believers, they are going to be judged by two things, whether or not their name is in the book of life mm -hmm. and by the things they did. The books will be opened. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. and now a lot of people teach that everybody who's resurrected at the great white throne judgment is thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, there's no guess. Okay. There's no wedding guess. Okay. <laughs> They've all been burned up. Okay. They're all in the lake of fire. But that isn't the teaching of, of scriptures. It's that these people, most of whom I believe are going to have their name in the book of life, they're going to be judged according to what they did. And so when you get to the new earth, there are actually kings on the new earth. And you go, well, how did they get to be kings? Well, they were righteous people. They, they didn't know Jesus, but they lived according to the light that they had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they get to be kings on, on the new earth. Are they believers? No. Are they Christians? No. Are they part of the bride? No, they're not. But they are people that Jesus bought. So they belong to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of these people, Jesus bought every single person. And if you're a Christian, you don't enter into judgment. You, you're part of a select group. Everybody else is going to be judged. Okay, and this is where um, in our minds, we don't have this other category of person. It's like if they didn't hear the gospel, they're automatically going to hell. And that's not true. Mm -mm. And in fact, um, the book of Romans in several places talks about people who have the light. They're going to be judged by the light. God is not a respecter of persons. He's a just person. He's going to judge every people, all people righteously. So, um. I, you know, I, I know that this <laughs> is going contrary to what the prevailing teaching about salvation is. But if you only believe that people either go to heaven or go to hell, there are no guests. Mm -hmm. Well, I always wondered, um, you know, one of the things when we were, you know, when we believed pre-trib was, um, um, and end times, we you know when we would talk about end times, we always heard, oh, it's not time for Jesus to come back yet because not every uh, not everyone has heard about him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how is that possible though? Because there's always somebody being born, you know. Right. And so, how is it possible that everyone would hear about him? And then I look at these, some of these tribes that are out, like way out that we don't even know exist, yeah. uh, much less be able to bring mm -hmm. the word to, I much less know their language. Right. And, you know, and so I would think about these tribes and things. And then, you know, I read in Revelation about the, the four, the three angels and, you know, they're teaching uh -huh. don't take the mark and so i thought well okay that would be a good time for them to hear you know about jesus and then i thought well the hundred and forty four thousand, and then i thought you know um the two witnesses but that's all basically after the first rapture so yeah it always bothered me how that was possible how people like that would not know about jesus that mean and people being born all the time, then we we would never be raptured. Well, ever. yeah, and you know, it, it you know if if people think that you know the meaning of the gospel going out to every single tribe and tongue and people and nation and so on down to the last you know tribe and you know New Guinea or whatever and 
Paul said in, in a passage in one of his uh, letters, he said the gospel has gone out to the whole world. In his mind, because it had spread out through the whole basically known Roman world and actually went, you know, Thomas went to India and different places, different apostles went different places, that the, the deal wasn't that every single country would have to hear it's that the gospel wasn't going to be relegated to just the Jews and Israel and maybe Samaria, the Samaritans, but it was going to go to the whole world and it needed to spread throughout the whole world, which it basically has. And in the time of the internet here, where the mm -hmm. internet is everywhere and everybody's got a cell phone. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. You know, any, anybody who's searching, God will make sure that they find Mm -hmm. so yeah um, except for like these these tribes that don't have cell phones or internet i'm well, sorry you, it bugs me about these tribes yeah <laughs> but you would be surprised you know and, and here's the thing god is fair and god is mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. and jesus uh um uh, paul says i think it's in second timothy that jesus is the savior of all men especially of those who believe He's the savior of all men. And so, and it's because we're in Adam, okay? In Adam, we die. In Christ, we're all made alive. All is all, okay? All. Everybody's resurrected, and then everybody gets judged according to what they did. And so if there are people who, you know, they lived according to the dictates of their conscience, it's going to count for good for them. It's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and people who were really, really, really wicked, their name may have been blotted out of the book of life and they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, you know, this is not the kind of judgment that we're going to be standing in. Uh, we, we go to the Bema seat and there we're judged for, you know, our faithfulness since we were saved. Okay. How we, mm -hmm. how we, what we did with the things the Lord gave us, you know, yeah. the steward. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know not everybody's going to agree with me, and there are people who are going to probably come on <laughs> on your channel with some some comments about how can Brenda say that, and why would anybody want to go out and evangelize? The reason you want to evangelize is because it's good news. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. good news, and if people accept Jesus as their Savior and they're born again, it's not just that they're going to live on the new earth. It's that they're going to be sons of God who will rule and reign and who will also be part of the bride of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It's an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I mean, you know, that was one of the things that started turning me from believing the pre-trib was because of these tribes. Um, there was a back in the, I guess back in the eighties and I, you know, I was watching one of my true crime videos and this was not really a, a crime crime. This was um, one of the Rothschilds. Um, oh, Okay. had gone out to one of the tribes to try to bargain or whatever. Anyway, they killed him um, because he didn't speak their language. They didn't speak his language wow. uh -huh. and they didn't know what he was there for or whatever. So they ended up killing mm -hmm. him. And so that was what kind of triggered me to go, wait a minute. What is, you know, there are so many tribes out there that people don't even know exist yet. And so that is not possible that we are going to have to wait till no. everyone hears about Jesus no. before he comes back because it can't happen. And then it started, you know, then I started thinking about births. Wait, there's someone getting bored every second. Yeah. And there's <laughs> someone dying who never heard. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what do you do about those people? Yeah. And what about the babies who are aborted? What about the babies mm -hmm. who die? You know, I mean, you can, you know, once you get, you get to a place where it now becomes absurd. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just too many. Now. It's just not possible for everyone to hear. So yeah, God's mm -hmm. got a backup plan for that. It's the way, I, you know, basically he's backup. Plan. Yeah. It, well, it's the plan plan. You know, yeah. it was the plan to, yeah. to save mankind. Mm -hmm. He, mm -hmm. he wanted to save, save everybody. And he knew exactly who would need it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we all, yep. we all need salvation. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And then yeah. it's, you know, and, and it's, you know, Jesus is the savior of all men, but to as many as received him, to them, he gave the right to become the children of God. 
Mm -hmm. So when we receive Christ, which is different, he gives us the right to become his children. And that's part of the gospel story. It's not just that, look, Jesus died to save you from your sins. It's that if you receive him, you get to be his son, his child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, there are people who, you know, just to know that God loves them and has forgiven them of their sins when, you know, there are people who are like trying to do penance for their sins all their life. And, you know, afraid that they haven't done enough and that if they die, they're going to go to hell and all of that. No, this is good news. Jesus mm-hmm. died to save you from your sin. And he's getting, mm-hmm. he's giving you an opportunity to even be, be more than saved. <laughs> mm-hmm. you get yeah. To be a child too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Maybe it's just me, but I, I kind of see it on y'all too. I get excited when we talk about stuff like this. It's like, can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's just the more you learn, the more you realize how mm-hmm. awesome the plan is, it. you know, and only God, <laughs> you know, because I should have never worried about these tribes because I should have known God was going to have something in store. He was going to make sure he knew about them. He was going to make sure they were yeah. taken care of. Yeah, And, yep. you know, whatever he does, you know, he he was going to make sure that they're, that the all these people would be okay. You yeah. know, and have the opportunity. So, right. you know, but that was back when, you know, that's what you're taught in pre-trip, you know, is that that has to it's, happen. You know, it's what you're taught. I don't care really what denomination you're in. It's what they teach. Mm-hmm. It, it really yeah. is. It's what's taught. It's heaven or hell, man. Turn or burn. And that is mm-hmm. not, that's not what the Bible teaches. <laughs> nope. Okay, Flora, are you ready to, are you, are you good with that, Brenda? Okay, go on to the next one. Okay, this one comes from Karen Den Home, 5763. And they're asking, what is the difference between the outer darkness and the new earth? Are the people in outer darkness allowed on the new earth? And then she put, P.S., I have watched your videos, but I'm confused about this. Yeah. I'm not surprised you're confused because it's kind of a, this is something that actually is taught in other places, but it's so considered fringe. So the whole idea of outer darkness is something that isn't really, you know, if you're mainline denominational, I don't care which one, you're not going to hear about outer darkness. Okay. So that's why it can be really confusing. It was and, to me at first. It's not now. Yeah. I totally get it now, but at first it was. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, um, what people tend to do, um, pastors and so on, is they tend to uh conflate um outer darkness, uh Gehenna, Sheol, Hades, Lake of Fire, and make it all hell oh. where you where you burn forever. Okay. I, and they they do that. That's how it's done. And that actually came, it, uh, was introduced into Catholicism. It came out of paganism. Mm-hmm. Heaven and hell, that idea came out of paganism, out of Greek philosophy and all of that. It is not Christian. It's not in the Bible like that. And uh, uh, hell, when you see the word hell, you need to go to your strongs and see which or what the original Greek or Hebrew word is, because sometimes it's Gehenna and sometimes it's um, uh, Hades or Sheol. Sometimes it's Tartarus or something else. And those all are different places. So hell is a terrible, it's it's a not useful term. Okay, so we're not talking about hell though. We're talking about outer darkness. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people confuse outer darkness where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth, and they go, "That must be hell." Mm-hmm. And sometimes outer darkness is called a place of burning. Okay, where um, that's usually Gehenna though, and Gehenna was the garbage dump outside of Jerusalem. It was in the valley there where people they just threw the body, dead bodies that you know indigence and whatever and garbage and all of that so it was always burning and it was right outside the city it was you know a a nasty icky place and that's basically what that is so outer darkness is is will be on the new earth okay so you have a new heaven okay and that's where the angels and 
I'm not sure what all is going on up there because God isn't going to be living in heaven. God is going to be coming down to earth, mm -hmm. living in the new Jerusalem, which will be on the new earth. It's going to be on a re really high mountain over the new earth. And I don't know how big the new earth is going to be because there's going to be, you know, billions of people on it, you know, mm -hmm. billions. Mm -hmm. It's going to so be big. It's going to be big. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, well, the outer darkness really is, um, the, the word actually is translated as obscurity. It should, that's the meaning of the word. It's, they're going to be in obscurity out there somewhere. So these people will never be allowed into the new Jerusalem. People who live in outer darkness are out there because they've chosen in this life, they've chosen this to walk away from Jesus and live contrary to him. Okay. And we're not just talking about, you know, habitual sins or things that we have problems with, but this is a, these are usually teachers and preachers and pastors who are who've really fall, fallen away. Mm -hmm. And in addition, I think that a lot of the first century Jews who heard Jesus teach and said he had a demon and, um, you know, couldn't, didn't recognize the day of their visitation, they're going to be cast out while the, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, all these other people, the, the, the sinners are going to be having, you know, this wonderful meal with, um, the, the patriarchs, all those other guys are going to be outside, not admitted. And basically, because Jesus died for, for all humanity, you have to really work to get into the lake of fire. Okay. And, and really the only two people I kind of can say, you know, well, one for sure, the antichrist is definitely going to go in the lake of fire. And Judas is mm -hmm. called the son of perdition. And I think that that's probably where he's going to go. I don't know what the extenuating circumstances are for his life, but something really bad happened inside of him that he would be able to allow Satan to come in and, um, you know, do all the stuff that he did. So other than that, if you take the mark of the beast or you worship the beast, you go to the lake of fire. But most people are, they're going to be saved from the lake of fire, which is prepared for the devil and his angels. That's their judgment. So for people, people, that isn't the judgment that people are going to be going into. They, they, they shouldn't be. That's, it's totally avoidable. But this, uh, I, I've done a video called the other hell, which is the outer darkness. It's the place mm -hmm. of obscurity. It's the place where you're not allowed to drink from the water of life. You're not going to eat mm -hmm. from the tree of life. And so I think whatever you go into eternity with whatever kind of body, whatever state it's in, that's the way it's going to be for forever. Where everybody else, though, is going to be continually getting more and more and more life to them as they eat from the tree of life and drink from the water of life. Their spiritual capacity is going to grow. Their everything about them is going to get bigger and bigger, where these other people are basically going to be what they are when they enter into eternity mm -hmm. and they are not going to have fellowship or hang out with other people i mean it's, yes. it's terrible and out of darkness you know in revelation when um you're reading towards the end about um the new earth and um the new jerusalem and it talks about there's um gates around it and i always wondered why does it need gates because we're in the new heaven what are we gating from <laughs> satan's gone yeah and there's, there's an angel at every gate yes mm -hmm. yeah got and a I, bouncer there yep. yeah a bouncer yeah and so it, it was always, you know, I don't understand why this is needed. And now you, you kind of do have an, well, we do have an understanding because mm -hmm. it's to keep those people, I would think, from coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. um, and, and Jesus said in several places that, that he is going to acknowledge us, those of us who acknowledge him, he will acknowledge us before the father and before the holy angels. <laughs> so the angels will know who's allowed in and who's and not, who's not. Mm -hmm. yep. 
Yeah. In my mind, I, I just envision it. You know, we've got the new earth. But I see, it, it, this is how I'm envisioning it in my mind. We've got the gates, and then it just goes black. <laughs> and that's the way I see it. But they can see in to see what they missed out on due to apostasy. Is that kind of the way y'all envision it? It's like it's just black. It's like yes. there's nothing beyond those gates. Well, you know, there there's going to be actually a sun and a moon on on the um, the new Earth because there's months, and the only way mm -hmm. you can calculate months is um, you know by the sun and the moon. And it says that the tree of life has a different fruit every month, mm -hmm. so we're still going to be calculating time. There'll still be a sun and the moon, so there'll still be some kind of you know what what we would think of as normal. But it says that the holy city doesn't need the light of the sun or the moon because the the lamb and and god are the light of the city and so yeah. you know the walls are while well, they're beautiful translucent and you can see i mean it's like okay for people who are outside in obscurity and outer darkness to see this thing of beauty this place of of and it's not just a place of beauty and love and light and god and all of that it's a place of life because the tree of life and the water of life this place is a place that's going to give people life mm -hmm. and they while they're not going to ever die they will never have the life that everybody else is going to have no, and because they're going to be in, I mean, in outer darkness and they'll be able okay. to see in, you said, right? Um, they, yeah, they'll, they can, see, they'll be able to see. I will think. we be able to see them? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah, I think that would be, I, I don't see us seeing them. Mm -mm. No. I think it would be too hard. To no, and you know what? I, I don't think it'll be hard because I think that the people who are out there, the justice of God is such that we we look at it and go, yep, you're right. Those people, that's what they wanted. That's what they chose. That's what they opted out for. That's what they said they wanted. And God is so gracious and so, so humble. He's not going to make anybody do anything they don't want to do. Yeah. You don't want to worship him. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can be out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want a relationship with God or, you know, his people. You don't have to have one. Nope. You can go out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You're right. You don't force it on anyone. Nope. It's free will, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he yeah. gives us that opportunity and we can make our, you know, make, yeah. make our own decisions. Yeah. Okay. Are you good with that? Are you ready for the next? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, okay, so this subscriber, I apologize. I forgot to write your name down when I did this. Um, so I apologize. But they did ask this question. Um, she He or she says on another video from a different YouTuber, they stated that Passover has to start only when the barley is ready. And if it is not ready, we should wait for the next moon to have the loaves ready for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He stated that initially it was a simple agricultural calendar prior to the Babylonian captivity. He also stated there had been two Passovers where barley was still green celebrated. So they were actually celebrated one month in advance. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Um, so my understanding is that Passover begin or that Nissan one begins on the first new moon after the spring equinox. So I think technically that's how it's calculated now, you know, and I know that that back in the day, yes, it was an agricultural thing, but you know, it was the priests of the temple who would determine whether or not the barley was of Eve, you know, and we don't have a temple. We don't have priests. We don't have anybody to do that. So basically uh, what we do now is just follow the, you know, the solar, the lunar solar calendar, which basically is the first new moon after the spring equinox. And then you, you know, Passover is on the 14th day of Nisan. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I know people kind of want to make, um, they're kind of making a big deal about it right now because there's so much happening, <laughs> you know, this month, <laughs> in April, the eclipse. People going to be busy. The red heifer mm -hmm. and all of that. And so it's like, you know, is the rapture going to be at Passover time and all of that? So, um, you know, I guess my, my, my bigger question would be, you know, why is this important to you? You know, why do you think it's important to calculate Passover correctly? Um, is there, you know, some something that you're looking for? Um, you know, so <laughs> I guess I. Um, so basically, I think you're, you're what you're saying is they don't really look at the barley so much anymore being ripe and stuff. They literally look at the lunar. Yeah, they go mm -hmm. by what what um, the sun and moon sun and moon is doing, mm -hmm. um, as opposed yes. to what the barley's doing. And because there's there has to be some person who is the one who says yes, it's Aviv, and no, it's not. And back in the day, that was the job of the priest. Okay, the yeah. high priest did that, or one of the priests did it. And there's nobody to do it now. So, you know, maybe people planted a little late. Maybe there was a <laughs> you know, who knows. Um, there's nobody to, those are rules that, that are not, we don't, don't, we they can't. don't actually follow those anymore. Well, we can't because we don't have the person who says that. Right. right. So, um, so in the Jewish religion, I know they have rabbis and stuff, but they don't have like a high priest like they used to no, because they don't have a temple and you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. That would make sense. Okay. And there's so many different traditions of Judaism, you know, mm -hmm. whose whose opinion do we go by? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they have as many denominations in Judaism as we do in Christianity. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yep. they, they got jokes about, you know, Jews not agreeing with one another. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I kind of think it's the same way with the Christians sometimes. Well, it is. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just as soon as you get into religion, everybody's got their, the way they mm -hmm. see it. So. But, you know, if we all treated each other the way Jesus said to treat each other, we could all have that discussion and everybody love each Good. other and, yeah. Good. you know, and and maybe find out more than what we already know because you take a little from here, a little from here, a little from here, and you get it together and you find out things that maybe we didn't know about, you know, or learn about because you're communicating yep. and bringing ideas together is that making sense oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay all it right does. well thank you Flora. you want to catch the next one mm -hmm. um this is from constance gray 3247 and they want to know is it possible to be given our glorified bodies and we put in parentheses we think she's asking the immortal bodies right after easter when jesus died and then she says, Brenda, you remind us of eight days. The eclipse is on the 8th of April. Can you explain why it would not be possible? Um, and uh, well, let me make this note real quick before Brenda starts. Um, Constance Gray, we do know you sent a second question, and we'll get to that one next week. But Brenda, can you answer her question about the solar eclipse and the rapture? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this has to do with the... Um, solar eclipse happening eight days after Easter. Is, that is I, interesting. That's, that's the deal there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if East, uh, Jesus, you know, rose from the dead and on the day we celebrate resurrection Sunday, um, then, you know, eight days later, why would that not be, you know, when we get raptured or, you know, become immortal or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the, the, the way I see it, and, and and again, nobody has to agree with anything I say, okay? <laughs> nobody has to agree with me at, on any point that I make at all. I, it, really, everybody needs to do their own, go to God, do your own research and all of that. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is that there are three different groups of people who are going to be raptured. And the first group that is going to be raptured is the, is the male child of Revelation 12. Mm -hmm. And the male child is born from the woman okay who is in travail and literally the woman is israel symbolically also the woman was 
was Virgo with the sun in Virgo. Okay, so kind of what this picture is telling us is that our rapture is a fall rapture. It's associated with the sun being in Virgo, not with something in the spring. Okay, so okay. that's that's our group, the male child group that when Israel goes into the really, really hard labor, which it looks like this is, we're, we're well on the way, we're, you know, we're going to get there. Israel is going to be all alone. This is just how it's going to happen. And yeah, that woman's definitely dilating. And everybody's <laughs> going to turn against Israel. Okay, And, and that's that happening. That's happening. Mm -hmm. And when, when she is in the depths of dis, of travail, that's when the male child is going to be born. That's when we're going to get our immortal bodies and then be here for eight days. Now, the second group of people who are going to be raptured are the 144,000. They are actually going to be raptured around Easter time, okay? Around, around first fruits resurrection day, okay? So they are going to be changed on the day that we refer to as Palm Sunday. Okay. That's, that's the day of change. Mm -hmm. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. And by the time they get to the eighth day, first fruits, which is, you know, resurrection day, that's when they go from Mount, Mount Zion into heaven and, you know, they follow the lamb there. So we're, we're talking about a lamb Okay, and that's Passover talk. Okay, when you're talking about a lamb, and it's so there is going to be a change and rapture around, you know, Easter time, resurrection time, but that will be about five months after we leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that is definitely you know a thing. That's mm -hmm. that's definitely a possibility. That that if we go this fall, they will go over you know Easter time next year, mm -hmm. next spring. And that's 144,000. 144,000, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also when the 10 days of of tribulation are going to be where the fifth seal martyrs are martyred. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah. 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 I, that's, I like that. Yeah. And so that makes sense why, you know, people are seeing possibly that there might be a rapture coming. Yeah. In that time frame, because there is just maybe there not is this going year. to be one then. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's it's not the first one. The first one is associated with the fall, with Virgo mm -hmm. and Israel being in travail and all of that. And the, the the next one is with the Jews and the Lamb, following the Lamb wherever he goes, the 144,000, and in addition, the, the fifth seal martyrs will be martyred at okay. that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that always, you know, always, you know, how does, you know, I used to think, I don't understand when I first started really studying this, why does somebody believe pre, why mid, why post, how do we all three just yeah. get different times for the rapture? You yeah. know, yeah, they were seeing the seals and the trumpets and stuff, you know, but why are we, why are these seeing the raptures at different times? And it makes so much sense because there's three of them. There's three mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They just haven't mm -hmm. figured that part out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, nobody has to agree with you, but people respect your opinion and what you say. And, um, and, you know, and yes, they should take it to the Lord in prayer and they should do their own research. But, you know, we've always felt like you have that extra gift of being able to interpret things mm -hmm. and it does help you know, with our studying, because, you know, we might not see something like what possibly you see, and then we can go to the <laughs> word and look at it and say, mm -hmm. oh, because, you know, how many times has that happened to us for? Well, <laughs> a lot. A lot. Yeah. It's happened like, to me a lot too. I'll yeah. go, what? That's been there the whole time. Why <laughs> did I see that? <laughs> it was like, is your Bible different joked. than mine? <laughs> I've actually joked I want to get me a chalkboard and hang it on the wall so I can do what you do. <laughs> oh, I've my talked goodness. about it. If I can find a spot to put it, I just have not found a spot to put it yet. Because <laughs> if I wish I could do it in this sunroom, but unfortunately it's windows yeah. all over yeah. the place. You're the, you're the same way. It's like the more you learn, the more you're changing. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And you've done a wonderful job with the with the updated timeline. Timeline. Um, 
but it's a work in progress. I've heard you say that. And it's like the same thing when you're doing individual studies. It's like, oh, I didn't catch that. And, you know, but I do. I joke all the time. I want either a whiteboard or a chalkboard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was. um, I Oh, I guess it was when we were just on our little, you know, getaway um, that I was doing some some Bible study, you know, getting ready to do some videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my husband was working on his stuff and, and I was thinking, oh man, I wish I had, I wish I had my blackboard. I wish I had my whiteboard because I need to, I need to draw this out in order to get a picture in my mind. And Mm -hmm. I was like, hi, Brenda, you're just going to use paper. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You get used to it. Okay. Listen, Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you this. Some, um, I got a notification that there was a news update and I just thought, and I saw it about Russia. And so I thought, let me go see what these guys are up to. Um, Because now, just now, because um, I saw earlier where they're blaming U S Ukraine and um, UK for that um, attack at the, at the concert hall, um, which I was under the impression it was Christians that were all killed but I don't know if that's necessarily the case um, that it was full of, it was a Christian service type thing. I don't know. I, but, that, I, that isn't the, uh, you know, I think it was a, a group, um, a band or something called picnic. Okay. Okay. That, that was um, during Soviet times. I think it's an old, old band. I could, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't know that they were, it was a Christian thing. Okay. Because I've seen both. And at first I thought for sure that's what it was, but now I'm seeing both. But what I'm seeing right now is Russian Pacific fleet has entered the Red Sea and is headed towards Yemen, where American and British ships have carried out strikes on the Houthis. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think that April is when all of this is, going to start to get real Mm -hmm. and uh, i was listening to somebody and they were saying yeah and by june all the people who've been thinking all this is normal are all of a sudden going to start to panic Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, oh lord sorry that just came out loud um i posted on my (laughs) facebook the other day um because it just i'm bewildered that i'm watching and i might even heard you say this too that I'm watching these non-Christians seeing all these things going on and Christians' heads are in the sand. I'm like, that's not a bad thing as far as the non-Christians because maybe it'll get bring them to Christ, you know, before it's right, too late. Right. But yeah. but for the Christians, it's like, I don't know. As far, I have to comment on that. It, to me, it reminds me a lot about what the Bible says that, you know, family, friends turn on you. It kind of falls into some of the Christians. I mean, they're they're lukewarm. They're I mean, they really don't have a relationship with Jesus. They they feel like they've they're believers, but they're not living it. You know, that's kind of the way I look at it. And it's like they don't know the Bible. I mean, they're not studying. I, I, I mean, that's the only way I know how to explain it. Well, you know, so much of what what passes for Christianity in churches is just, you know, the kind of seeker friendly thing and just keeping everything really, really, you know, basic. And, you know, Jesus Mm -hmm. died to give you a good life and, you know, to be prosperous and you get and to, you know, to feel good about yourself and all of this. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I, I see through that now. And um, it, it lets me know, too, why I could not find a church. My husband and I would visit. I mean, and we didn't care what the denomination was. We just visited. Yeah, yeah. Trying yeah. to find one. And we could not. I just, nothing felt right. Nothing. It just mm-hmm. either felt very clicky or, yeah. um, I don't know, too slow or too this or. I mean, just there was always something that just did not feel right. And I know what it is now. I need it to be, I need it to be more this way, more yeah. branched out. Yeah. Yeah. There, not like, not stuck right here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, you know, and if I had gone to just 
like, and I'm not picking on Southern Baptist. It's just what I was raised. But, you know, I'm limited, you know, in what we can do or say. And I went to a Bible study just a few months back, and um, I really enjoyed the group. People were super nice and stuff, but they were getting ready to do the Daniel study and then the Revelation. And I looked at the books they were going to be using, and I was like, I can't do this. I will be running my mouth, and people will be like, looking at me like I've grown a third eyeball. I will probably get myself kicked out. So I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't have fit either. Mm -mm. No, it was total pre-trib, total. I mean, not even... Like, I've got a, a revelation study in there that I really enjoyed so far. Um, but she's not teaching anyone specific. She's, you know, teaching about the seven churches, you know, like what was going on during the time and why did Jesus say this? And, you know, it's not it's not really um, it, it's end times, but not end times. It's the book of Revelation. Right, right. Yeah, and um, yes. I could do one of those, but this I saw and I was like, oh, I know where this is going. And yeah, I was like, can't do it because I knew I would be. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Brenda, Brenda trained you well. <laughs> you know, if she doesn't fit, you know, don't wear it. Just don't wear it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's sometimes it's better not to go because there's no way I was going to convince the teacher and an entire group no. of ladies. No, there was like no. 40 of us in a different theology and a different eschatology thought process yeah. in an hour. Right. Yeah. yeah it, and, it you just, know, and this is the case of the, of uh, the new wine in an old wine skin. Yes. Yeah. It just, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. Mm -mm, mm -mm. and people say the old wine is better we like the old pre-tribulation revelation teach yeah. it's better mm -hmm. okay and that's that's what tradition does it gets you this stretched out wine skin that everybody says i i like that stuff better mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can't put anything new in it you can't and you you just you know so you can't go into a group like that and say maybe i'll be able to help them mm -mm. Uh, Mm -hmm. no. change their thinking no you're gonna get run out on a rail get your feelings hurt and they're gonna you know yeah. you're, you're gonna be on the outs oh yeah oh yeah and That's and it's not and I mean it was common sense too though you got 40 something people in there and because it's a pretty big church and it was a pretty big study yeah and you got like 40 something people and and they're christians there's no doubt oh, i yeah, mean yeah. great people and um and then, you know, me, and it's an hour, exactly one hour. And, you know, they start to finish and, um, I, there would have been no way and it would have made me crazy. And I know it would have. So I was like, you know, sometimes it's better just to. Yeah. Not go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have, I have friends who, uh, you know, go to just regular churches. I, I have a very dear friend, a really good friend that, um, you know, she just thinks that what I teach is just a little weird. It's a little off. And she goes to a church where they, they teach pre-trib and, you know, they have a great program for kids and this, that, and the other thing. We're, we're very good friends. Okay. We're mm -hmm. very good friends, but mm -hmm. I'm just a little, you know, out there. He likes me and we both believe that it, we're in the end times, but <laughs> just but different think, ways that it's going to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she's not on the same page yeah. but you know what we're still very very good friends and that that's good yeah. because um yeah. i lost a friend um of 10 years over politics because yeah. um yeah we i mean i didn't like who she voted for but i never said that i didn't like it i never said anything you know that was your choice you go do what you want to do mm -hmm. And then I voted for my person and all I would hear is these horrible things, you know, well, you're the one that voted for the idiot, you know, and it just yeah. continuously and then religion yeah, mm -hmm. um, became next. And I finally was like, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to be able to move yeah. on where I need to be. 
Yeah. No. You know. I'd like to say something too about what Brenda was just talking mm -hmm. about. Um same way, I've got friends and family that believe pre trib. But I do know they have a good relationship with the Lord. That's what matters. I mean, yes, it's wonderful to study eschatology, and I'm on board with what what you've you've presented to us. We've prayed about it. It feels comfortable. But that's the main thing, and and you teach that as well. You got to have that relationship. It's a relationship with Jesus. It's not the building, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. wonderful to fellowship with other Christians, and we can have different views. But I see so much arguing sometimes over it. And it's like, it shouldn't be that way. No, um, no, no. Jesus tells us to love. And yes. sometimes you just see Christians just going at it. And it's like, it shouldn't yeah. be that way. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, um, you know, yes, salvation is the utmost importance, being a believer. Mm -hmm. But listening to Brenda and learning and going to scripture and seeing what she's taught mm -hmm. that belief of once saved, always saved, you can do no wrong. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. I'm so thankful to know that that is not true. I'm glad that mm -hmm. I found out that that is not necessarily true because mm -hmm. how easy would it be to end up in outer darkness or mm -hmm. you know someplace and i'm else. so thankful that you were teaching on that because i i really dug into that because you were like blowing my mind on that one because i'd never <laughs> heard it before yeah mm -hmm. yeah but it makes so much sense when you study it and it's like we never heard it in church no and you, when you mention that to somebody else that hasn't studied it they had the same look and i had I, I was like a deer in headlights i was like what <laughs> what are they talking about <laughs> you should have seen us on something when we were trying to learn pre-trib post pre-wrap and then brenda came along and threw another one in there and we're both going <laughs> <laughs> and it Blow was like, all out of the water <laughs> oh my gosh and then we were like you know we had all these different teachers and we were doing notes and stuff and taking notes and doing this and um like for just an example of this but flora might say well that's that da, 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 da. no flora that's the post trip i could have sworn that was mid no it's pre-wrap <laughs> you know for some <laughs> yeah hours so. doing that okay so and i was the same way and she'd be like no barbie i think this person said it was this <laughs> oh. uh, but we were so glad to get it all worked out okay we've got mm -hmm. one last question and then that's it um are you good one more question it looks like it's gonna be a pretty easy one yeah yeah okay all right this one's from healthy a siva is that right healthy a s c -E -E as eva Oh, oh, he's a little Australian. I, I think Australian. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. Healthy as, um, healthy as Eva. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 7246. She asks, what do you think will be the role for the angels once we are glorified and maybe take on some of their roles? Will they be out of a job or will they continue to do as they have done for ages? I like to know that too. Yeah, that's a great question, mm -hmm. actually. And, you know, <clears throat> that's an advanced question, okay? Because you have to come along for this ride here for a while before you you even realize that the the some of the angels are going to be out of a job. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because yeah. when so, I read um, that question, I, that when I pulled it off of um, our last video, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this kind of goes back to, um, and I don't even remember who, where I talk about it, but um, there's two places in the book of Revelation that talk about um, the word place. Okay. So in Revelation, the letter to the church of uh, Ephesus, that if they don't overcome, that their lampstand will be removed from its place. Okay, so I remember thinking at the time, you know, when I was doing my studies, what does that mean? It doesn't mean they lose their salvation if their lampstick stand is taken from its place. What does that mean? And then in Revelation 12, we read that 
Michael and his angels are going to fight against the dragon and his angels and Satan will be cast out of heaven and because, and there will be no place found for them anymore. So it's the same Greek word for both those places, lampstand removed from its place, Satan and the angels have no place in heaven. And that word place is, is in English, we think about it as position that a position that you're holding, you're going to be removed from is somebody else is going to take your place. Okay. So the, the people who overcome will not have be replaced as, as far as, you know, in the hierarchy or whatever. And the thing is though, that once Satan and his fallen angels are cast out of heaven, all of their positions that they hold now, whatever they are, they're going to be replaced by believers who will be in heaven at that point in time. So all, all of us, you know, the 24 elders, including all of the Old Testament saints that make up that group and the 144,000 and the fifth seal martyrs. Okay. We're talking about millions and millions and millions of people who are in heaven in a glorified state who are going to re be replacing Satan and uh, replacing the positions of Satan and all of his fallen angels, however many that is. And apparently there's enough Christians in heaven by that point in time that we can, we can easily replace them. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, so that's pretty cool. So they're going to be cast to the earth. They're out of a job. Now, as far as the good angels go, um, I think that they probably get to keep their position. Some of them might, might actually be promoted and get a higher position. Because remember, the Bible tells us that we're going to judge angels. And I think that angels can be more or less faithful. Okay. It doesn't mean that if they're less faithful, that they're somehow or another sinning or whatever. But I think there's, you know, levels of faithfulness for angels and they may be put in, in promoted to some other position and other angels may be demoted to some other place, but and it may be that believers will actually take the place of some of those angels and they'll be moved to some other position. So God is always moving people and angels. They, you know, according to faithfulness, you get a higher position. If you're less faithful, you get a lower position. <laughs> you know, if you're mm -hmm. uh, the first will be last, the last will be <clears throat> first. And, you know, the Lord is always moving things around. Um, you know, we think he's very static about it, you know, that it's all going to be, you know, just it's very, very stable kind of thing. But no, he's very, you know, <clears throat> angels will be moved out of positions if they are not faithful. And I think that um, right now there are angels over countries, you know, like the Prince of Persia, the Prince of Greece, you know, the, there's the principalities that are over nations. I think most of those principalities are fallen angels and we will definitely take their place. And so they will, they'll, they'll be gone. That was like the light bulb went off when you explained that, because I never, I've never thought about the fact that the fallen angels and Satan, they have roles. So they've got to be, I've, I've never <laughs> thought of it that way. So that was a wonderful explanation. Yeah. And I hate to ask this question, but, um, we are still going to obviously going to still have angels in the new heaven. Uh, what if another one pulls a Lucifer? That's not a possibility because there's no humans on the earth. Well, that aren't protect. Well, I don't know. Adam no, and Eve were immortal. No, the thing is, is that there, this is the window in t of time when this is allowed. Okay. okay. And after that, Everybody is going to be where they are, and that is forever. There is nothing, nothing will change. Nobody will, you know, everybody's going to be where they are. Nobody is going to pull this stunt again, okay? okay. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Good, good. I didn't think it was because it wasn't in the Bible, but, you know, I thought yeah, I'd ask because, you know, you know death like... will be no more. There's no more death. There's no more. The sea is no more. The sea represents, of course, Hades or the place of the dead. So the places where people would go if sin came into the world again, they're gone. Okay. And even death is gone. Yeah. So we're done. This okay. is this is over now. Okay. And, um, yeah. 
Good. <laughs> because I couldn't imagine if we circle back. Oh, my soul. Not going to circle back. No, I didn't think so. It didn't say it in there. And I figured it would. But just thought I'd ask, throw that out there. Because, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a question, too, because I, sure. I think this one would be simple. But it's something I've always wondered. Why do we get a new name? When he hands us a white stove, I've always wondered that. Why do we get a new name? Good question. Yeah, that's that's a really good question, actually. And and um, you know, in the Old Testament, people were given new names. Okay, mm -hmm. and usually their new name reflected the new identity that God had for them. Um, you know, Abram went from Abram to Abraham, and. Uh, Jacob mm -hmm. went to Isaac and Joseph was given a, an Egyptian name. I think that meant the savior or something like that, savior of the world. And so um, our new names are going to reflect something about who, who we are going to be uh, in glory. You know, what, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, okay. they're going to, and, and here's the thing. I think every single person will have a, a name that's unique to them. Nobody else will have their name. Mm -hmm. It's like fingerprints. You know, everybody's mm. unique. Your yeah. name is going to be unique to you and nobody else will have it. And it's this, you know, it has to do with your identity. And the other thing is it has to, it's like a pet name. You know, it's the name that between you and God. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. The only he is going to be calling us that, but our other people would still call us by our names. I don't know. We may have a, a normal name. I don't know. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the name represents you as a person. Okay. okay. Your name is you. It's your identity and character and all of that. I mean, back in the day, people, I mean, I'm, my my husband's dad used to say, now remember, you're a Weltner and, you know, this is the family name and you don't want to do stuff that's going to, you know, mm -hmm. make the name, mm -hmm. you know, people yep. think bad don't about. Don't tarnish the name. Don't tarnish the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, people don't even think that way anymore. Uh -uh. It's not even a, a thought, but, but people realize that your name it represented, you know, your family integrity and it's who you were as a family. And so you don't want to ruin that. So that's cool. one thing that came to mind while you were explaining that the old has passed away. He gives us that new, I'm just thinking that he gives us that new name because we're no longer in sin. So our new name reflects us in the new in yeah. heaven. Yeah. I want like, kind of like when, um um jacob went to israel you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah because he was a, a different person right i mean at that person point. yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saul was his name paul he started going by paul yeah and mm -hmm. uh you know there's it's a it's a thing you know where you start a new life well like even people who get married okay mm -hmm. now i know that this a lot of times isn't even common anymore either where the wife will often not take her husband's name but i did i took my husband's did, name yeah. i'm starting a new life i get yeah. a new name that's associated with him mm -hmm. yeah. so names are they're a lot more significant to god i think than than we yeah. than we think. we we're very casual about it um Am yeah. I the only one that sits around and thinks, I wonder what my name will be? <laughs> I know no, because it's crossed my mind. People have <laughs> written me uh, about that. So <laughs> I don't know. But well, I, know I, we talked, I know we talked before. I'm sorry, Brenda, finish what you were saying. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no. I was, I was just going to say that, that when you get your name, you're going to go, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything beats Barbie. Hard. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> my sister's name is Barb. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. My dad just named me her. after the first Barbie doll that had brown hair and blue eyes. He oh. said if he ever had a daughter with brown hair and blue eyes, he was naming her Barbie. Well, my oh. sister came out with brown hair and brown eyes. Oh. So mm -hmm. I got Barbie. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. I was supposed to be Frankie. I'm really glad I wound up not getting oh. that name. <laughs> oh, because your dad's name was Frank. Yeah. 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 I kind of like it, actually. 
I was actually named after an aunt that passed away from breast cancer right before I was born. Aww. But my name is so old fashioned. I can't find it on anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's a it's an older name. But you know, names mm -hmm. like yeah. that um, and flower names. You know, Marigold and um, <laughs> Daisy, I'll, I'll, Rose. Lily, mm -hmm. these are all flower names are all coming back. I've got several grandchildren that have flower names. My dog's oh. name that you keep seeing is Sally Rose. And uh, yeah, we call her Sally know. Rose. Well, my granddaughter that just turned seven months, my daughter named her Charlie Rose. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't <laughs> after the dog. Um, it wasn't <laughs> after my dog. She just liked the name Rose. <laughs> well, it's a pretty name. I like it. It is. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely becoming a very good uh, middle name. Plus, I have another granddaughter that's Amelia Rose. So oh, well, yeah, that's pretty too. Yeah. yeah, and they're from different from ones from my husband, ones from my side, but they yeah. still ended up with the same middle names. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah I've got a, a Daisy, a Lily, and Azalea. I don't have any kids, but I'm very close to my nieces, and their middle oh. names are Faith, Hope, Love, and Grace. There you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. My great niece is Daisy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It didn't even cross my mind about the flower names coming back, yeah. but yep, they, they yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. I've always joked that I was going to open a florist and call it Florist Florist. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what my name means is flower <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right yeah it's <laughs> well i know we said this yes. at the beginning of the video barbie do you want to read that passage from psalms um, and then we, we can but this is already going about an hour and a half and so okay. um i didn't yeah. realize it was i mean i pass. Brenda knows i can go all day i'm fine with it but <laughs> i don't want to dominate your time and yeah, so, I, I um, probably need to roll. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. um, and we can get to it the next time, the prophecy or mm -hmm. question or whatever. But anyway, we appreciate you guys coming and having coffee and study time with us and Brenda. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, guys. You, thank, thank you for so having me. Love you. Thank you. Hang on Bye. one second.